Yeah. Right. Good. 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 All right. Uh, we are back and ready to go here. Um, so we are under new business item A, uh, which is the section regarding longevity pay. Um, as I'm going to try to kind of handle these things as we get yeah, each of these items as we go, um, I, I, the city could just give us a brief, um, you know, what brought us to this, what changes are we making, um, we'll have you do that, then we as a body here will speak on anything we have questions on, then I will ask the audience if they have anything to speak on, and then we can move forward with whether we want to move something forward to a public agenda or not. Or excuse me, public hearing or not. So longevity pay. Yeah. So um, this provision with longevity pay, we have um, in several of our collective bargaining agreements um, negotiated uh, out uh, longevity pay, uh, primarily because longevity pay in step programs and those work agreements uh, is handled very differently than it is with. Um, non-represented employees. So uh, as part of our uh, of a recent bargaining with um, one unit, they agreed to remove this provision from their work from their CBA. In exchange, we committed to removing this from the personnel policies and procedures manual before January 1st. If we don't, then um, I can't remember exactly the provision, but um, that they would continue to receive longevity pay. So this is really fulfilling a commitment we made in bargaining. Um, I believe now we have five of the seven collective bargaining agreements that no longer have longevity pay in them. Okay. I could be I could be four, but I believe it's, it's five. five. It's four. Yes. Uh, so this is uh, you know kind of bringing some level of consistency about relative to compensation. Mm -hmm. Among non represented and represented. Very good. Um, I have a couple of items. So I just want to clarify, and I, I believe from everything I've read and heard, this nobody's pay is going down, correct? Who's currently in mind? Correct. correct. It's going to roll in, kind of collapse into their. So the way, we, the way uh, longevity pay works for those employees that are not represented, longevity pay just rolls into their compensation. OK, it just becomes part of their pay. There's no separate calculation. It's different for those employees that are represented. It becomes a separate bucket of money. Uh, so, um, you know, it's a separate matter. But in those circumstances, you know, those employees that that separate bucket's not going away. It's just not going to grow. OK, Very so no, nobody's pay as part of this is going down, is being reduced. OK. Um, and I believe. OK, very good. Um, and. Uh, OK, so um, in the paragraph, the pink paragraph, the comment there, um, it says that um, and I'm going to paraphrase. It's been a while since I reviewed it, but that um, that instead of they're going to uh, if council will approve a budget item, there will be a 0.5% uh, raise, I guess, if you will, um, in place of that longevity pay. Is that my understanding of the comment here? And I'll, and I'll just further phrase so you can answer the, all of it is, um, it, it would, if we're going to state that that's what's going to happen, um, I think we should maybe consider that there be like that add it into the actual language instead of a comment. And please tell me if I've missed it, because like I said, it's been a little while since I. So as, as part of the bargaining for on these CBAs, we committed to ensuring. So there, there are periods over, um, you know, over the previous sure. decades where um, there have been, you know, zero, zero uh, compensation increases available for employees. Um, you know, some of the comments we received during, you know, bargaining was, well, you know, sometimes that, you know, we got zeros, but we still had something with this longevity pay. So in those provisions, we did commit to ensuring that employees at a minimum would get the, you know, what is equivalent to the longevity pay increase. Um, you know, with non-represented employees, 
it really is different. There's a lot, I mean, there's more discretion. So uh -huh. um, I think this this manual contemplates that there's discretion provided. You know, some some years there may be, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, nothing for all, you know, for non-represented employees. Right. Um, you know, we would certainly strive to try to meet and match whatever is being provided to um, represent employees, mm -hmm. but that may not always be the case when we're trying to balance a budget. Understood. So, um, and that 0.5% increase would be considered separate from a COLA adjustment, correct? We don't have separate buckets right now anyway. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So it would all be lumped into one. Now, this this consideration, I'm sure, would be brought up based on the, the historical longevity discussion, uh -huh. but we wouldn't want to make it separate in terms of, you know, the distinction. Okay. When it's all wrapped into one from a budgetary perspective. So there's, we're not going to be writing anything. We're not codifying anything into here, no. stating that. We're just saying, as you go through your budget process, you will consider correct that additional. Okay. Um, and let me see over here. I do not have. Sorry, I'm looking at changes from uh, last meeting to this meeting too, and I do not have any further comments about that section five A. Does anyone else have anything they would like to discuss regarding 5A? Oh, and does this go, I'm sorry, this goes into 5B as well. Sunset, sunset for all active. Okay, okay, yes, I'm sorry. I have no further comments on the longevity pay. Does anyone else here at the table have any items they have questions on regarding the longevity pay? No. Okay. No. Is there anybody uh, sitting behind me who has any comments they'd like to make on longevity so, pay? Chair, Madam Chair, um, just not to be too um, detailed about this, but I believe there, I don't see on here a section for public comment on the agenda. Um, yes, so, so on the personnel board policies, um, it states um, that uh, it is at the discretion, at my discretion as the board, as a chair. Um, I didn't highlight the section here. Meetings, special meetings forum. We run into this at uh, council meetings as all. Well. I'm bringing it up. So <laughs> believe you me, <laughs> I understand. Um, uh, number three on the last page, so four out of four of our policies and procedures for the board it states employees and representatives others with knowledge on a topic may address the board on any matter concerning the business of the board. If an individual wants to speak at a meeting uh, that is on the agenda, then the individual must request staff liaison to request to you two mm -hmm. days before a meeting. If an individual wants to speak at a meeting regarding a matter that is on the agenda, then the individual may speak during the citizen comment section on the agenda or when the board is considering the specific matter. The chair can approve or deny a request to speak to the board. Speakers shall be limited to five minutes. All remarks shall be made to the board as a body and not to individual members. Personal, blah, blah, blah. You can't sure. get so, out of control. So that, so that provision mimics what's in the PUAB, where if someone wants to speak, they need to uh, make a request two days prior to the meeting. Uh, and, and then it's up to you whether that occurs. So okay. I don't believe you received any requests to speak. I don't want to diminish anybody's participation while they're here certainly but i also want to make sure we're honoring the uh procedures of the board so okay um that uh i understand that and appreciate that i would like to have these personnel board rules sent out to every employee so that they understand that so if they want to come and comment um please copy me on the email to all employees so they'll know that they need to do that. Because if you're not on this board, you wouldn't know that you necessarily needed to do that. So. Um, or. Yes. If I may. Uh -huh. This is a public meeting. And the, as the board had ruled earlier, at the end of the meeting, we could have, I think, so many minutes. The council does not require two day notice. So if we show up and if you want to spell out forms, do we want to but to restrict to say we have to have two days when the general public doesn't and this is a public meeting now i plead that we don't do that yeah again uh this uh, models so the could, yeah. uab uh rules yeah, of so procedure I, yeah so and I also could, like with the city council agenda it's noticed where there's public comment at the beginning of the meeting there's none here so again i don't if we want to add that 
going forward, fine. I think the personnel, the rules of procedure would need to be amended uh, for that. Yes, and that's exactly what I was going to state that we will need to make a move, um, make a motion to uh, uh, change that for the next uh, meeting, which I think is also <clears throat> going to be other amendments as well, based on some of the items that we're looking at. Um, however, I don't believe this document has been made public to. I don't know if this is this document is public so that people would have known they needed to sign up two days in advance. So. Um, so I'm going to ask for a vote of the board to amend uh, to uh, what's the word I'm looking for to tempor temporarily suspend the rule of the two day requirement to see if there's anyone who wants to speak. So I'm making a motion that basically if someone has not given a two day notice, but they are here to speak on an item that we are discussing that for today's meeting, they will be allowed to speak. I mean, I would agree with that. All right. <laughs> Any comment? Got a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there any comment um, regarding wanting to have any time? Only please. Hearing none, um, uh, I will entertain a motion from the board to move the item A, the title there, uh, forward for a public hearing to be scheduled um, with appropriate notice. My question is the whole idea of public hearings. Uh, I understand it if you're going to rezone property or if you're going to have a beer license. Uh, and we're becoming so formal that we have to have a quote public hearing when all the meetings are open and we just voted on the thing that anybody can speak. Uh, I just I, th I think we're taking ourselves unless there's some law that I'm not aware of. I just think I'm fine with everybody talking and inputting. But to have a formal hearing, it just seems like it's a pure and red tape. It may be the law. I don't know. Um, and I am not for sure where it's written. I know it is written. So I'm going to ask you I, while I make a comment, if you guys can. I don't have that section. I didn't know that come, was going to come up. So I don't have that off the top of my head. Um, a public hearing is required with 10 days notice. Um, and the reason for that um, is because uh, employees need to have a chance to come in and be allowed to speak in a public hearing um, about a topic because this all applies to them it doesn't apply to us it applies to them um, and so uh, a public hearing is noticed 10 days in advance by an email to every employee um, you know this information is given to us in a meeting um, specifically and then yeah. So, um, if you could please sure. provide the section, I, yeah. I don't remember if it's in charge. section Article A, uh, <laughs> Section B, um, and it, I think there's a distinction here, and it's a minor one, but it's, it's a hearing. It's not a public hearing. It's a hearing. Okay. Um, we'll so, hearing. I think uh, you know where employees are invited to come and weigh in on changes, absolutely, but not necessarily the public. Um, yeah, it's not a public hearing as like we had last night, right? Right. It's a hearing for uh, you know interested parties, employees. Um, it actually says employees um, and their representatives uh, may you know yes. come and talk about it. So yeah. Um, that's yeah, it's right right from the beginning of the personnel policy and procedures. Yeah. Uh, it talks about that. So it's a ten day ten day notice and. So, OK, so we've determined that we do need to follow that procedure. Um, I've made a motion um, to for this to be moved to a public hearing as noticed, uh, properly noticed. Yeah, just, just Thank you. Sorry, sorry, one one last thing. Oh, I can't uh, say public hearing. You'll have to just excuse me because it's probably going to come out of my mouth. That's, that's fine. Uh, so the that provision, I'm not suggesting this, but I'm just you asked the question, so I would like to provide a response. You know the personnel policy and procedures manual. We're amending it right now, right? So if there's a process that this board wants to explore changing how things are amended, that's certainly fine. You know the charter talks about the personnel board should have the shall have the right to weigh in on things, but it doesn't necessarily say you have to do this process, right? It just says you have the right to to weigh in and on and provide input. So. If the board ever wanted to look at a different process, we we go through the process that's here to amend your process. 
but since we're just an advisory <laughs> committee, we're an advisory committee. Ultimately, somebody else is going to have to approve this. Maybe it's city council. It is. It is. Is that the point? Is that the place where a public hearing is appropriate? I mean, we I mean, are we're just an advisory. Sure. Committee. I mean, we have, uh, you know, boards provide uh, have varying levels of, you know, authority and influence. Uh, you know, the planning commission has has quite a bit of authority, but that's vested in state statute. Uh, you know, here the this board has these hearings. Um, then, you know, when it goes to city council, there's, you know, as we kind of went through earlier. Um, People can come and speak at those meetings at the beginning of the meeting uh, to talk about anything that's on the agenda. So there, there's an opportunity there too. Okay, so I want to. We're very on a very tight time cut sure. here because yeah. we have we have a hard stop at 11:30. So um, given that this is a current procedure, if we want to change that procedure at some other time, um, please let me know how you'd like to have that change worded and we will consider it. Right now, it is in the policies and procedures. These things, you're indicating some of these need to get done by the end of the year and yep. you need to move forward. Absolutely. So yep. again, there's a motion on the table. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay. Motion passes. That one can move. On to item B, which is definition of terms. This one's going to take a little bit. So that is section nine, which is page 80, 60, excuse me, 61 of the old. And I'm not sure what I'll do. Uh, 64, if you're looking at today's packet. Um, uh, as I indicated at the top of the meeting, there's a few um, minor word changes that I think that. I know you, you've asked us to look at specific items, so we will discuss those specific items that we will change. Um, so uh, there are other items on here, though, that I believe some of it is like some of it kind of doesn't make sense. Some of it has uh, definitions and words that we don't even use in our documents and things like that. But um, for the sake of time, um, we will take the items specifically that you've asked us to consider. Um, and that is uh, the first one, um, Article 10 under uh, break in service. Break in service. <laughs> Sounds funny the way I said it the first time. Um, that is just a, uh, the, the city, I think, in many of their documents are moving to uh, gender neutral um, pronouns. So uh, I don't, if there's any issues with that, please say so. If not, let's consider that change. Um, and there's some other places, like I said, where I kind of found that we didn't catch that. So let's uh, consider that a change that, uh, let me do it. Let me do it formally so we don't have any questions. So I make a motion that uh, any reference to gender specific pronouns in every policy, personal policy and procedure be changed to a gender neutral with the subsequent, uh, you know, if there's a verb change that type of thing. Um, can I get a second on that? I have a second there. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right. I think it's too long, but I think that's the word. So I'm going to abstain on that. Okay. Very good. Motion passes. Um, and we can work on making sure that's changed across the board. Thank you. Okay. Now it looks down to department. Director is wanting to change to department head. Um, I suspect your uh, the comment that you made there explains what you're trying to do because uh, we have chiefs that are department head, but call them chiefs, and it gets a little confusing. Uh, so, one second here again as I review my notes that I wrote um, in article seven under grievances we use the phrase department head um do we need to i think maybe because department i don't know if department head and department i'm sorry it's my apologies a division excuse me division head is used in article seven of the grievances i think maybe that is would have been department 
director, which we're now changing to department head. But um, let's, I think that maybe that's a little bit much to get into while we're right here. So if you guys are good with this and the board's good with this, I think we'll just take the, just let's just take that change, that wording change that you have there. Mm -hmm. Are we all on the same page as to what I'm talking about? Yeah, where I'm at on the, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, so is there any discussion from the group on that change that they've asked to have made? Hearing none, page. That is Mitchell. Okay, then we're going to go to page 68 of the current document which is 65 of the previous document. Um, and this is one of the notes I made, and I think this is, uh, we have called, mm -hmm. so are we, so you're wanting it to, to become now the human resources department. So are we settling on that versus personnel department? Is that what you're asking us to yes, settle please. on? Okay, then, the second the one right below that, of course, is the human resources director um, that was never changed because it was the chief human resources officer uh, back last year. So um, you're asking us to change from personnel director to human resources director to match the change in the title of the. OK, um, and then. OK, and so then that that last sentence ties us back to the. To the charter, which is that is the personnel director and we'd make that tie in there. Yep. OK, very good. So is there any discussion from the group on those two, the personnel department change and the human resources director change title? Is there any comment on at the table? No. Jerry, no one is there any comment in the back. Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to move the specific items indicated in Article 10 definition of terms uh, for to be moved to a hearing held back in the public <laughs> <laughs> to, with, to a hearing with proper notice. Uh, can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Motion passes. All right. Uh, on to item C, which is bereavement. Madam Chair, can yes. I make a request, please? Yes. Could we take um, item H out of out of order here, please? Um, that that's another timely one. If, okay. Unless. Yeah, no, nope. you no, we've we've asked you to prioritize yes. and we we don't know what's prioritized. Yeah, that, that, that would be no. that would be a, a priority. Okay. For, for right. before the end of the year. Okay. Um Thank then you. I would like to then I will make a motion in front of the board to take the agenda out of order for us to consider item H uh now given our time constraints. Can I get a second? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Let's discuss the simply, which is article. What pages are up? Uh, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. I've, I've got sets of pages everywhere. Uh, so that is article. I'm looking for. Tab everything here. I think it was my new That's six. Okay, um, old document is page six, well, previous document is page 16, so head that direction, I'll figure out what it is. Today's packet. Let me see if it's already, you can holler it out. Page 18 then. 18, thank you. Yeah, first one starts with 17, head to this to um, 18. Um, uh, uh, could one of you just give us a brief while I'm re reading my notes um, on the request for this change? Uh, sure. So um, with regard to the sick leave payout, um, 
upon retirement or separation, we're just defining what that payout's going to look like. It doesn't change the amount of hours that an individual is going to be paid out during their sick leave or for their sick leave payout. It's just going to define even further um, as it's clarified in some of our union contracts that sit that sick leave payout and how that payout's going to be determined. Um, and then uh, further in six, um, employees hired after December 31st, 2023, they will no longer, uh, those employees hired after that date will no longer be eligible for a sick leave payout. Okay. Thank you for adding that because that was one of my questions as to wanting, you know, to define like basically you're saying the timeline. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we're putting a stop on that. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Just for the record, that yeah, not, that provision does not impact anybody that is covered under a collective bargaining agreement. Correct. All right. <laughs> These are for non represented employees only. Yes. Yeah. So. Did you hear any heat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel any heat. Just, just, just wanted to make sure <laughs> that was understood. What is that, about 10% of non-represented? About 20. 20. About 20. Okay, um, I have no further discussion on that. I, I myself have no discussion items uh, relative that, to that particular one. Or is there any other uh, comments from the table? Hearing none, is there any comments from behind me? Very good. I uh, make a motion to move, to move said section of uh, the article there regarding sick leave to a hearing with public, a hearing with proper notice. <laughs> Can I get a second, please? We'll need a second for us to move forward. Awesome. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. No. Okay. Motion passes. And the reason I do that, I don't believe in this public hearing business. So that's, this is not, oh. You know, that, so you're going to vote no on all Conceptually, I, I think we're open right now. Yeah, well, the, the situation is, is that it is required by our own policy, by the, the policies and procedures. So I have no authority no. to change that so oh, and that's um, fine if, if so that's the reason i'm voting yeah now. okay not that i disagree okay it policy. would it kind of would yeah it would be helpful if we you know um yeah yeah no, yeah that um i i do understand your point um but we can't break the rules so that's why we will be doing these each individually as we are. Uh, is there uh, another item you would like to have us move forward or should we drop, jump back up um, no, ma'am, we're fine. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move back to, to C, which is bereavement leave, which is Article Four. Five, Four. I'm sorry, five. Yeah. Five H. Again, if somebody gets to it before I do, I think it's under F, after FMLA, which is all of a whole lot of pages. Okay. On 25, ma'am. 25 um, and 24 of the old. So we'll get to that. There, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, um, I do have, uh, I, I think, uh, I'll just make a statement. I think this is pretty comprehensive is that you're, uh, you're allowing people in their probationary period to have bereavement leave. Correct. Exactly. That's session. exactly what it is. Yes. Very good. Okay. So I do have a couple of cleanup items on this section since why we will be making a motion if, if it passes to move this through. Um, so, um, you just have to bear with me on this. So on the first line, in the case of death, that it ends with regular full-time or part-time employee, there should be a comma there. These are small things, but if we're going to clean this paragraph up, we're going to do that. Um, then if you go down to third line starts the sentence, bereavement leave may not exceed three working days. There's a colon or a semicolon there that needs to be removed. Again, these are small grammatical things, but do make a difference. Um, the last sentence there where it says department director, um, that will then obviously change to department head, and we need to, to uh, capitalize that because those that was not previously capitalized. Um, so those are just the small um, wording, uh, you know, small items. Um, so I do have one question in general. Mm -hmm. um, 
that I noted. So in a, when a, an employee is in a probationary period, we are allowing them bereavement leave, which I personally think is, um, I think that's a very nice, good thing to do. Um, but I do understand from reading, they cannot take sick leave. They can, well, they can be sick. I mean, you're sick, you're sick, but you cannot take your sick leave during your probationary period. Is that my understanding of the reading of the document? And so there's discretion that, in, that a manager can use during probationary period. So there are allowances for certain areas of leave during a probationary period. Um, so th technically the answer is yes. However, a manager can use discretion and that can be talked about with our department during those times. Um, and we have used discretion in areas where that's allowed. Um, and it, as we get into the policy with regard to probation, we're going to talk a little bit more about that and what okay. those allowances are. Okay. Um, but that's our short answer for now. That's very much appreciated. Okay. Okay. So is there any further discussion from anyone at the table regarding this change? These small wording changes and the sentence change to allow for bereavement for employees under during their probationary period. Hearing none, is there any comment from anyone behind me? Hearing none, I make a motion to move uh, section C of our new business uh, to a hearing with proper notice. Uh, can I get a second? second? Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. On to jury duty leave, which is probably it's just a couple pages ahead. Uh, Thank you. You guys are getting ahead of me. You know where I'm going. Over here. Okay. Uh, one minor. Um, again, a, there's an extra comment on the second row on the second line of text it says where it says duty to their supervisor take out that comma this so <laughs> wrote this loves commas even more than i do <laughs> beyond that i think commas. so uh please just consider that um for that change um i think that again this is probably pretty straightforward from the city that this is just basically saying that that five ten twenty dollars you might get from that time you serve on jury duty probably costs you more time to process all of that and chase it down than it is worth it so okay. you're basically just allowing to keep that and the books. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, I mean, pretty yeah. minimus is uh, my, what I would say. So um, is there any discussion from the table on that item? Hearing none, is there any discussion from anyone behind me? Hearing none, I make a motion to move that section, jury duty, so uh, new business section D, to a public hearing with prop, up to a hearing with proper notice. <laughs> Can I get a second? Second. Very good. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. On to adoption of plan, which is Article 5. And that's five, eight, two. Okay. Um, I think I know why you're doing this, but I'd like to have you guys just say it for me and then we'll determine whether that was. This but, is the pay plan, correct? The, yes, adoption of the pay. So uh, the, the last time the council approved our pay plan, they gave discretion to the C manager's office to approve the pay plan moving forward and it no longer has to go to council for approval. So we're just making that consistent with our personnel policy to uh, allow for the C manager's office to do so. And was that in an ordinance? That yes, they did that. Okay, mm -hmm. um, very good. And uh, also, too, I just wanted to address it. Uh, that I think there was some concern that, um, you know, kind of like you're cutting the city council out. You now they've obviously asked for that, so right. you're not you're not cutting them out, you know, in a, in a way. Um, but also, just for clarification, um, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is they approve any change to the classification plan. So if you add a Supreme Animal Control Officer position, and there, you know, it's going to be a salaried in a certain area and that type of thing. They still have to approve changes to the classification plan, which then, of course, builds. When you say they, are you asking the council or the, the council. city manager's office? The council has so to. So when we that. add positions to the pay plan, they're put through um, the compensation 
platform that we have established, and that is also approved by the city manager's office. So the answer to your question is no. No. So the city manager, so with this change, mm -hmm. then the city manager, which I also think there might be other sections maybe we need to refer to, I'm not sure. Um, so the city manager could make a change, add a new position, change a title, uh, remove a position and none of that the city councils is would unless they requested it of course they're saying we do not need to reach, approve those any correct person. yes so that compensation study and those those levels those job levels mm -hmm. are approved and those compensation rates and levels were approved by the city man i'm sorry by the council um and those are marketable and and those are reviewed by my office and the city manager's office uh, on a quarterly basis, and all of those have to go through myself as well as the city manager's office every time uh, an addition or a change is made or requested by a department or a director or a chief. Now, when that happens, um, it is reviewed and approved uh, by. by by myself as well as the city manager's okay. office. Uh, and when that when that happens, it goes through the proper steps. But that does not have to go through council. They can review it at any time, and that is public. But that um, and that is that is based on that market study. Uh, but they have given the authority to the city manager's office to approve those at, at, at any time. We will be making a review of that compensation study uh, on an annual basis. Um, and I actually um, will be making a review of that probably sooner than that uh, moving forward. But that authority has been given to the city manager's office to make those changes for jobs uh, and to make those additions. Uh, at their authority. Okay. Um, so within, within the budget authority that is, exists. So correct. It's, it's there. there There's are, parameters. There are constraints and parameters associated with that. So um, I am not aware of that ordinance. Um, and um, I, don't, I, I think this one maybe is, I would like, I'm not quite, I, I want to just tie a little more together. I'd like to do a little more research on that. Have, if you guys can send us the ordinance that was passed, I don't recall that. I'm sure it was. Yeah, it I was don't. a resolution, resolution. Uh, that went, that was probably uh, the same night as the annual budget was approved. Okay. The pay plan was approved. Okay. Um, so uh, I do have further questions on this. So um, I would like to make a motion to table uh, this item um, for further review um, and to be moved to our next meeting that is scheduled. Does that fit within the city's timetable? There's no sure. I mean there's no important essentially this is ratifying action that the city council's already it's taken. Already taken. So, so, um, we're working within those yeah. within those parameters already. Uh just for clarification, mm -hmm. you would like to see the ordinance in the next board packet. Yes please. Is there any other information you're requesting from staff at this time? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, I, I just, like I said, I, I watch, but I don't remember that specific item. No problem. Because um, I think about, like, for instance, when the, um, well, for instance, when, uh, Mr. Norris, when your title changed and moved to deputy versus assistant city manager, you know, that was taken to council. They approved that change. When we added the shelter came under our, you know, purview, then mm -hmm. all those items, all those positions were laid out and voted on. Okay. Um, so I just want to take a little further time to look at that um, and understand that. So, is that a, bo a boogie boogie board? This? Uh -huh. It's called a remarkable. Similar to. But that's a. I like that name better. <laughs> yeah, I know. What I thought. I thought aren't there bo boogie boards <laughs> right on in the surf or something? <laughs> but okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, there's a motion on the table to postpone that item. Uh, can I get a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. That'll be moved to the next item, next agenda. Uh, it looks like we've got two of the same items next. Did that change from the previous agenda? Is that supposed to be two separate? I'm not sure. We'll have to work. I've got termination twice. Uh, it looks like what we've missed on there is holidays, unless that's been moved. No, we probably will need to amend the agenda to include the holidays. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take up um, F right now, which is 
Article 6, Section V. Which starts in the old on page 44. In the new. Is page 45. Okay. I see no changes on the previous, so I will just address things on my phone. So we are actually looking at this entire section B. Um, so I will go quickly through a couple of the items that, well, I'm sorry, I, as I did not allow you to, please just give us a brief summation of how we got here and what we're doing with this. All right. So. Uh, Mainly what we're doing is breaking up Section B uh, to allow for a better understanding of what the uh, process for termination is. Um, moreover, what we're doing is allowing for the HR department to be more involved in the termination process, first and foremost. But what we're also doing is allowing for um, the uh, HR department in Section um, in, let's see, six in a1, first and foremost, to deny the recommendation for termination. So it shall, if a department head should bring a recommendation for termination to uh, to me, let's just mm -hmm. say that, right. mm -hmm. um, we have the authority to recommend, uh, to deny that recommendation for termination based on the information that's brought to us. Okay. Um, in, in point two, um, that takes the, in sec, takes section B and basically outlines that same authority outlines in section b uh so it oh uh, because we, we we're killing section b there correct and just basically kind of moving that language up. yes up. Okay. Uh, and and it also allows for a little better understanding in uh in subsection three uh for the employee to understand if there is no finding for their reinstatement and back pay um when they are off for leave um and for them to understand what um, their compensation looks like when they are reinstated, because that is not currently in the handbook now. Okay. Uh, and then uh, in three, there's nothing there that says um, what can be done immediately um, should the termination for cause be necessary for a non-representative employee. Yeah. Uh, so that's out in yeah, three as well. When you say three, are you you're talking a three? Yeah. Oh, uh, so B1A3. Okay, gotcha. Um, so, uh, also, are you at? Is this also this whole section is is um, flows all the way to B3 final payments? Um, Yes, and we can go into that as well. Okay. So the final payments um, outlines, is, as everyone here knows, we're working towards a new payroll system. Um, as we're reviewing that, we had to um, specify what our new pay uh, structure looks like. Um, in doing so, um, the FLSA rules require that certain states, all states, actually have an outlined um, due, due pay system for employees who resign retire or are terminated. Um, what this outlines is what that pay structure will look like when an employee does pay, uh, terminate, resign, or retire. Um, this just outlines those pay, that pay structure okay. accordingly. According to FLSA. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so let's move back to the top then. So we are at um, section B, term, uh, B1. Uh, I'm going to, again, go through quickly some things we need to do. Department director, which one's department head, needs to be capitalized. Um, termination, uh, then, and this is this is kind of, again, what I'm going to kind of send you a list of. Things like the classified employee needs to be capitalized because that is a defined term. Uh, um, so when you have, um, again, I reviewed this a couple weeks ago. So Bear with me. Sure. Um, so one A, and then there's three items. Um, so uh, when it's recommended to you, um, you can deny it. Um, you can place the employee on suspension without pay for 10 days to conduct 
or you can terminate. Perfect. Right. Um, so I didn't. I, uh, sorry. So I, you know, like you have between sections like that, um, the or versus and. Mm -hmm. um, so. You'd like that added? Wait, yeah, and I, I apologize. Let me go back That's and read fine. again. When upon review of the shall, yes, because so you you will deny it or to or got it. Just so it's obviously you're not no going to do all three, but just to make that word. Okay. Look it up. Um, again, classified info needs to be capitalized. Um, um, and then I had said I had. One of my suggestions there was so under two I S E and three mm -hmm. the little ones yep uh, where it talks about termination I was wondering if those that two and three needs to be moved below number three because that's the discussion of termination uh, should be recommended for termination. Let, let's let's maybe let's handle this this way. That is a kind of a movement just for it kind of seems more to make sense to me to move that, but it is not a substantive mm -hmm. discussion. Uh, it's not going to change anything. It just seems like it feels like it should kind of move sure. underneath there. Um, and then one other move that I that we can discuss offline. But again, the substance of, of what I have. Um, so let's stick with just that first that first part of the red line as far as discussion. So I'm sorry, is there any further discussion on B1 up through the red line items on the second page? Okay, so then it goes on to say, um, if the recommended termination, um, I thought it should be also added or suspension without pay for more than 10 days is appealed. It should be processed in a timely manner pursuant to Again, that article needs to change. Uh, so because they can, a suspension without pay for more than 10 days can have an appeal, if I understand correctly. So the appeal part of this can be, uh, is, is talked about further down in the policy. Okay. So would you disagree that, since we're talking about, you have the option to deny it, um, Put them on suspension or agree to it and terminate. That that pair that one sentence, which is really right before number two, there is applicable to the whole section. So uh, obviously, if you let them keep your job under one, they're not going to appeal anything. Number two, you could put them on suspension with you know without pay for ten days or whatever. That's appealable. And number three, termination is appealable. So if they're put on suspension, they don't know what they're appealing. Um, so that's it. they don't they're not told what they're putting on termination or on. Uh, so if they're put on suspension and, and invest if they hear if I speak, that would be great. If they're put on suspension, uh -huh. the investigation is ensuing. So they they aren't aware of. Oh, OK, they aren't aware of anything at that okay. point. Right. Because the investigation is happening. OK, so there's nothing to appeal at that point. Understood. If they're terminated, then they have the right to appeal, okay. which is down okay. further in the policy, and they already have that right to appeal once terminated. Okay. So it's 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 not necessary as I see it uh -huh. in in this part of the in this part of the policy, and that that explains it perfectly. Okay. So um, strike that um, issue from my concerns. Okay. Uh, and then as this again moves further down, um, there's some capitalization in there, an extra comma. We can discuss that offline. Um, then on to the next page under final payouts um, that is still in this section. The only th highlighted item I had was, so we are on three final payments, section, subsection A, sub subsection three mm -hmm. so let me reread that it says department timekeeper will remove from their time entry batch any hours sent to the payroll department regarding to avoid i think the word regarding in there really doesn't belong it doesn't read 
sent to the payroll department regarding to avoid? Uh, that may be an older, yeah, an older one you have because I think we may have removed that. Did student. you fix that in this one? That I, I believe have? we have. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me just real quick check that. I apologize. This is taking longer. I did not have a chance to catch whether that was three. Oh, there's a four on. Um, there's a four here, and there's a three here. Only three here. What other changes were made there? Okay, department timekeeper will. Oh, you took that section out. We did. Payroll because we had to process. update it based on the new the new system okay. changes. This was done based on the new system changes. Okay. Okay. So that was done. Okay. Because that again, that has to do with more like how you do it, like in Correct. batching and all of that yes, kind of exactly. stuff. Okay. Okay. So I see that that's changed. I apologize. I didn't catch that because okay. it wasn't blue marked, which is again not a problem. And I do appreciate your help with that. That no did problem. help me. Okay. So uh, just regard th that comment of mine. Um, is there any discussion on this uh, section, uh, Article Six, Section B, termination anywhere along the line of what we discussed? Anybody at the table? Hearing none, anyone behind me? If I may. Yes. Butch, could I ask you um, to step in front of the owl? We just, can see him. Come it's sit. fine. Yeah, he can see mm -hmm. him. Stand right there. You're fine. Okay. And I can stand and be corrected. Sure. This looks like a change to the whole structure of the disciplinary and termination process. But because it's been my understanding that you don't do the disciplinary action of 10 days off without pay before you do a, an impartial investigation to determine what the infraction of punishment is. At that point, you determine we are going to discipline to the point of termination, give a 10 day suspension without pay, where you have a right to perfect your appeal for that suspension for the cause that was established to you in the partial hearing, and that you had an opportunity to uh, make your, your points. So I, this is to me a confusing restructuring, and I don't know that it fits in my opinion, with a merit system where you have a preparatory right, proper property right to your job, and it's incumbent upon management to say, here's what you did. We've done an enforced investigation. We find you guilty. You have a chance to defend yourself. Now we've made a final determination that that discharges your penalty, your discipline. You're off without pay. You have 10 days to perfect your appeal which would fit that, that then you would know. So I'm thinking I'm not involved in it. I'm, I'll never be, I don't know that I'll ever be disciplined on the same offense again. I have been fired by the city and restored. <laughs> but I would ask that you let protect the due process and don't give them the penalty until you've done the enforced investigation and let them perfect their appeal to protect their property rights, it was envisioned in that marriage system that the people adopted in 1961. Thank you. I'm going to make a comment of some things that I have a thought in regards to that, and then I will ask you guys to fill in and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, first of all, the um, the this, the 10 day uh, with pay, correct? Without. Oh, without. Okay. Um, I guess I was thinking, like, for instance, um, I, get, I understand this is a department policy. Um, you know, like police departments typically have a policy. If there's an officer involved shooting, someone is put on 10 day administrative leave to get up for investigation, which is different. That's their own department policy. Um, so, also in the, here then is also the phrase a department director, again, which we need to, you know, change and sure. capitalize, may for cause recommend termination of a classified employee capitalized again. Um, so is is that helping us in the sense that this is a for cause? And, and I think, you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it up to you to discuss it further now, because now I 
talk to each other. I do a circle. It's okay. I talk for so, a circle that I don't know. It's all right. So first of all, the state of Missouri is an at-will state. Yes. All right. So um, with regard to uh, merit, it's not applicable to this particular discussion. Merit's different. The right to appeal is it's, is noted in our personnel policy. So if an individual is terminated, they still have a right to appeal. The 10 day suspension when applied in this circumstance does not have merit, no pun intended, mm -hmm. with regard to this particular type of disciplinary action because an individual does not know why they are being suspended when utilized in this format because an individual is only being suspended while an investigation is happening. So when it was written in this context, an individual doesn't know what they're appealing, doesn't apply. An individual can take an on appeal, a termination only. That's our, that is not being touched in the said policy. That's not changing? Is that is saying. not changing, okay. all right? They still have that right. An individual that is non-represented is working for the state of Missouri and it's an at-will state. We, as the employer, have the right to do so, but we as the employer also have due diligence in making sure that we have the correct documentation to terminate for cause. It is our responsibility to make sure that our managers and supervisors are doing the right thing to terminate for cause. And that is why it was important to put in here that the Human Resources Department has to be involved in every single disciplinary action and every single termination. That is the responsibility of our department to make sure that those actions are taken on accordingly and handled appropriately. It is our responsibility to make sure of that. That is also why we can say to those department directors, absolutely not, we cannot terminate this person because we do not have the appropriate documentation. This person has not had an egregious act to said, to said termination, and we are not, this person has no reason for termination. They may have reason for disciplinary action, said things, all the things. We've all been in human resources. We understand what that means. All this is doing is outlining disciplinary action for said cause, just like any other employee handbook would do. The way it was written prior only allows for one action to be taken, and it takes that authority outside the realm of what a human resources department or a department director can do. This outlines cause accordingly in an at-will state. <laughs> it does not take the authority away from an individual who's terminated to appeal that decision in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Does that help? I think so. And when we look at, oh, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure Adam didn't have anything to add. And when we look at it, if we look at the, just the, the black lettering and not look at the red, yes. it used to just say a department director may for cause recommend the termination of a classified employee. Mm -hmm. Period. And that's it. Right. So we are actually expanding to provide another layer of review to ensure that whether a department director has um, put this forward, okay. you know, this is wanting to terminate this employee because maybe something is not correct or not substantiated. You didn't give them a performance improvement plan. You didn't follow merit system. You didn't, you know, give them an opportunity to perfect whatever the phrases would be. So before it was just if your department head said you're a classified employee, you're fired for cause. Now you can go terminate, you can go appeal, yes. but this is adding a layer of which is good for the employee to have another look at it. Checks and balances. Yeah. Yep. Now that also means for our represented employees, we still have those contracts, right, that we have to follow in those circumstances. But we certainly want to make sure that we have the appropriate means for these for these managers and supervisors to follow through the proper change so that they're learning the right processes. Sure. And also that the human resources department is is maintaining the structure that's appropriate for 
our employees uh, to be considered appropriately. And there's that outside perspective that's being taken into consideration. Which I do also think is a good thing um, in the sense that, um, and I'm not saying Jim Nail's not, but um, I doubt Jim Nail's a human resources, um, you know, expert or Lisa or someone, you know, who um, they should be looking to you for yeah. that. And so this provides, you know, that's your expertise. So, you know, exactly. not a lot of just go out and say, I, today, Laura, you're done. You, I need to go to HR to discuss that. Exactly. So I actually see this from what we had before as an improvement to what we have now. Any further discussion? And this is any further discussion on any item in the section B that we are looking at. Hearing no further discussion, I would uh, make a motion to move this item to a hearing properly notified. I get a certified. Is that all of B or just B1? Um, no, they've asked us to take up all of B uh, according to the agenda. And unless anyone wants to carve out a particular section, um, I am going to assume B includes one, two, and three. Does that make sense, Lindsay? Yep. Lindsay, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, motion on the table to move this to a hearing with proper notification. Uh, is there a second? Second. All in favor, say uh, aye. No. Oh, good, sorry. Further discussion. I'm, I'm just curious if Mr. Carnier is happy with the explanation or do you still have some doubts about it? Uh, you know, I appreciate that if you won't allow me, though. Can you give me one more second, please? Yeah. Uh, let me check my, let me check our time here. Um, I can give you one minute because I'm running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does it start now? <laughs> I didn't understand the explanation, and I was thinking I was just going to let it slide. But the you put the person on ten day notice, okay? But he, that person doesn't know that they're on a ten day notice, and they're going to do an investigation during that time. Now, somehow at the end of 10 days, you know that you're going to discharge that person or you're going to put them back to work. That that doesn't allow for the step process of building up and that puts you in a position where you're somebody is determined that you're going to you're on the 10 day notice for this discharge before an investigation. I, I think that's not right. But I don't know that I'm going to intrude much further than to just say that that the, the city manager is appointing and uh, discharging authority. I don't see that in there either. I see a removal of the city manager from that role. I I don't think the thing doesn't fit in my mind. But I've said my piece. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Thank for you, for the afternoon. you bet. And I'll just add one further thing again, just to, just as a, a, another item. If we don't accept this change, and correct me if I'm wrong, that person could be just, you know, fired by their department director and then only be able to move to the appeal process through us. This is, again, an intervention to say, you know, we got to look at this to make sure you've we can't just fire people with for wrong reasons, you know, and there's checks and balances and documentation and things like that. Yeah. So without that, I think the employee who may get terminated is at a disadvantage. I think this gives them an advantage. In my that that is that is the intent of the change. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any further discussion? Well, is, there, is there any way, Jamie, that you could kind of take into account for these? And sort of massage it. I'd like to I'd like I, to see agreement. I you know, feel I mean. um we certainly can. My my understanding of the appeal process is what takes that into account. Um that's my understanding of the appeal process. Uh what what doesn't allow for that in that 10 day suspension, in my opinion, is the unknown of what that investigation outcome will be. 
um, what clarifies that in that sep in that investigation outcome uh, based on how it's rewritten is that the outcome will then show what the investigation outcome is, which isn't currently in the in the policy now, and also the back pay, which isn't currently in the policy now. So the the clarification of the policy, those two additions from what it is now, actually gives more light to what what will happen after the suspension than what it is now um, based on the outcome of that investigation. It outlines what what the clarified process will be after suspension, whereas now it doesn't really say what happens. Um, and then the individual will have the right to appeal per the policy later on. Um, and and in, in my opinion, that's where that comes in. Um, so I'm not quite sure how how we can clarify further, but happy to discuss further if we if we you know if we can. But that's that's my hope is to allow for that that appeal process to work through its paces and later on down the line from a termination perspective. Okay, in the, in the nature of uh, with concern for our time, I don't think this is the um, this is one of the hot buttons, but you know we need to get to it. Um, and I think just some questions maybe, and I you know I'm going to go back and look at it again. So. Um, I'm going to uh, take my motion off the table. I have to move this uh, forward. Um, and I'm second, instead, I will make a motion uh, to postpone this uh, to the next meeting uh, for to give us time for further review and discussion. Second. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Very good. Aye. And as well, excuse me. Um, all right, uh, so um, now that we are running down to our last few minutes here, we'll lose our form when Kendra needs to leave, which is completely understandable. Um, I am going to make a motion to move all the remaining items under new business to the next meeting. Can I get a second? A second. All in, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Now, we'll what are we talking about? The baptism? Um, uh, it, we will be moving F through, well, that was on a separate motion, but F through L to the next meeting. Um, and that'll give us time to, to put the holiday back in there. With, no with the exception of H. Yes, we've passed H. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. So let me just state, let me just basically state for the record that it's any item that we have not taken up under new business. Okay. Very good. Um, that takes us to, very quickly, we need to look at next meeting, um, dates and times. Um, it is imperative because we are a four person body right now that we have a quorum. So we need to look at that. Um, and I will also ask uh, of, uh, management, are you wanting to put uh, items we've already mentioned for public hearing, excuse for a hearing? <laughs> would you like to schedule that as well for those particular items or would you like to wait till the others are passed? We should. We, we would like to through, proceed. Please. Here we go. All right, let's look at the calendar then. Um, uh, you guys want to? So let's just let's do our any day will be okay. So let's do our next meeting date, um, which we to take up new items, um, or to take up a, you know like our normal meeting. Mm -hmm. Let's decide when we need to have that. Are um, we going to be meeting here all the time now, or until uh, further notice? Uh, yeah. They're working on that room over there, and there's no, we can't get in there. They're doing it. Oh, okay. Or not, I don't know, it's construction's right where they're putting AV equipment in. So we will be here until further notice. Um, I would ask you then for the urgency of us meeting again. Then, yes. You would prefer that. Uh, okay. I mean, just to, the logistics of getting items to the city council agenda for consideration. Yeah, uh, Timing's pretty essential. Okay. Um, so for our next regular meeting, would Friday, November 17th, so it's a week from this Friday, work at 10 a.m. here or via Teams? And is that a good time frame for you guys? I would say the 16th is better for me. 16th. I got something on the 17th. I said 16th would work better for me because I got something scheduled for the 17th. Thursday. Yeah. So Thursday, November 16th, 10 a.m. here. 
Good, good. I don't know. 17th, I kind of, it's on fine the 17th. But I know the 10th and the 24th are holidays. So Fridays work out better for me, but I'll try to work I, it out. I, I, yeah, solidly booked on the 16th. My apologies. No, that's fine. That's that's what we just have to, you know, work through. Okay, so Kendra, 17. What about a different time on the 17? I, I mean, I don't I don't have a problem with trying to meet it again, like. You know, even on Monday. I need that, but I got kind of a, that's going to take some time. Yep, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Would would it be possible to, um, since we're trying to schedule the next the hearing for these items, could we do the hearing yep. and the meeting, the next meeting at the same on the same day to be respectful of yeah. your your time? I think that's great, and okay. we'll do the hearing first because that yep. gets us your immediate, yep. and then Absolutely. whatever time we have left. Okay, that's yep. very good. So so uh, so different time on the seventeenth, or is that what you're saying? Well, we're going to have to give ten days notice yeah, now. Gotta, so you tell us when the first day we could meet to have that hearing would be. Um, it probably uh, no. two. And then we run into the right smack in the face here. If we notice it today, we could make the 17th one. Um, can we pull that off? I mean, sure. <laughs> is the, is the you're her boss. Is I don't know what you expected. It's a legitimate question. <laughs> you have something going on. Okay. In the I just. Okay. Don't. All right. Okay. What about the time? And that's how about the the twenty is. I can no, do. I can't do the twenty. No. Okay. What What's the next available day that week then? Besides the twenty. Well, we're talking about the sixteenth. We can't do. We we, can't we, we have to post this for ten days. Uh, the the changes. Okay. So now we're on Tuesday, November twenty first. That works for me. That works for me. I'll what? just have to check the calendar. I I don't have my phone or anything okay so let's let's plan for um tuesday november 21st 10 a.m this room i assume or you'll let us know if we can I mean, have this yeah it, to get this whole thing wrapped up i'm not opposed to meeting a little earlier than 10. i mean could be you know nine o'clock i mean you know i'm I, I, we got daylight savings whatever that was you know so it's really uh later than it seems yeah. Do you want to do nine? Whatever. On the 17th? No, no, no. We are on Tuesday, November 21st. Nine o'clock be fine. Okay. Nine a.m. Right. So we'll, we'll notice the hearing for nine o'clock on the 21st. Yes. And then whatever other items we're able to get to that day, we can. Yep. Okay. It's going to be in this room? Yes. Yes. It's going to be in this room. I know for the FLSA public hearing, we had to bulging out the door. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've, I don't think it's going to be the case, but they I have, have bad vibes in this room. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good I'll time. Like that. Um, uh, okay, so again, Tuesday, November 21st, 9 a.m., this room, unless noticed otherwise. Correct. It is imperative that we have a quorum. I'm well, going to set to let you know. Okay. Okay. And we'll we'll give Carl a call. Yeah. Um, so uh, I I would ask just for professional sake that as soon as you know if you're not going to make it or you can please notify Jamie um, because it takes two weeks to get something on an agenda for the city council. Mm -hmm. If we don't make that meeting, we are going to be very behind and possibly have issues. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Perfect. All right. With that, we don't have any time for additional new business, so we are going to, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Very good. All in favor, say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You bet. Good luck today. Thank you.